Hey guys, welcome back to On The Spot STEM, and today we're going to be live solving the 2020 Math Counts chapter competition round and the sprint round, and we're going to do this in spirit of the fact that there's no state or nationals this year because of COVID-19. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're probably not going to spend all 40 minutes, hopefully. Hopefully we can go through this, I mean, uh, as fast as possible, and hopefully get a perfect score, so we'll see how this goes. And if I have any additional scratch paper, I have it up here. And so there'll be a timer on the screen, so let's start. Let's get right at it. Uh, so before I start, I'm just gonna say that when I solve all these problems, I'm not gonna do full in-depth solutions because obviously you want to do it like pretty fast. So I'll probably throw a few buzzwords so it's easy to follow. But if you have any questions and you want more detailed solutions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. All right, cool, let's start. How many minutes are in four and a half hours? Four and a half times 60, 240, 270. Uh, Herbert's gift basket contains three oranges, five apples, nine. Three times five is uh, 15. Um, one half is six, so that's two, two times, uh, three, three times 12 is 36. The table shows the minimum and maximum wind uh, speeds for four categories of uh, hurricanes. What is the absolute difference between the minimum wind so minimum for category four and uh, maximum speed here. I'll, I'll center it later in the camera. Yeah, like that. And maximum for category one, max for one. So the difference is 35. I hope you can see it in the beginning. All right, cool, yeah. And now the bottom question is, what is the perimeter of a square area is 144? So the side is 12, so the perimeter is 12 times 4, 48. Yeah. If three miles are equal one league and one league is 24 furlongs, so one mile is one third of a league and one third of a league is one third of 24, which is eight. Uh, in a quadrilateral, MA is one nine. Okay, so there's just 360 minus the sum of all these angles. So 119, 89, 49. So 27, 2, 10, 6, 1, 2. Oh, uh, this seems weird. 12, 13. Oh, it's 15. Yeah. Yeah, always double check. So you have 257. So 360 minus 257 is just 103. Uh, in the first four terms of geometric sequence, okay, I mean, it's just times two. So it's 32. Uh, Gladys draws two polygons. Her second polygon is two fewer than twice as many sides. So it's just three. So it's three times two minus two, which is uh, four. Okay. And then for the problem on the bottom. So it's four dollars per meter and it wants to buy 50 centimeters. Well, 50 centimeters is half of a meter, so it should be two dollars. Yeah, okay. Uh, Misko has an average score of 70 for her first three runs of golf. The first run is 60 and 72. What's her third score? So, well, 60 and 72 have an average of 70 and she wants an average of 70, so she just has to get another 70. Um, and the figure shown the shaded area is 36. What's the outer square? So if it's the midpoints, then this square will have half the area of the total square. So this is 36 and the entire square is 72. Uh, Rafa and Sasha play a 320 point tennis match. If Rafa had an average of 12.7 meters per point and ran an average of 11.8 meters per point, how many more meters did Rafa run? Well, um, Hmm. On average, Rafa is 12.7, Sasha is 11.8. So on average, Rafa runs 0.9 more, like per per match, but 320 times 0.9, because there's 320 matches, is, well, 32 times 8 uh, times 9 is uh, 288, so this is 288. Yeah, so this is 288. Okay. <coughs> yeah. The length and width of a rectangle add up to 16. The length is 3 times the width. What is the area of the rectangle well this is just width plus three width equals 16 so the sides are 4 and 12 so that's 48 what is the value of square root of 5 times 6 times 10 times 12 well notice how 6 times 10 is 60 and 5 times 12 is 60 so square root of 60 square root of 60 okay that's cool uh, okay so now it's the figure shown is, is, is a square with sides 5 inches Hmm. Okay, so each side is one inch. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Like I'm doing a distance from this point to like the center. And you want the shaded stripes. So this is this square. So this region right here is this squared minus this squared. 
So it's 4 squared minus 3 squared plus, then it's this region right here, 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is 7 plus 3 equals 10, I think, is the answer. Okay. Um, how many two-digit prime numbers have 1 as their units digit? Well, we can probably just count this. So it's 11, 31, 41, 61, 71. Yeah. I guess the troll here is maybe they want you to think 91 is prime, but 13 times 7. Okay, so the next question is donated $10 and pledged 10 cents per lap mural walked. Then Joyce is doing 35 cents straight up. So what value is it equal? Well, then that's just 10 plus 0.1x equals 0.35x, which is 10 equals 0.25x. So to solve, just multiply by 4 and you get 40. Okay. Some of the digits in the following cor correctly worked arithmetic problem are missing. How many possible values are there for a digit represented by A? Hmm. Well, if this is a 1, that means this digit right here is going to be like something, and they're going to carry a 1. So the 4 plus 5 has to be greater than 10, but the only way that happens is if you carry a 1. Because you obviously can't carry a 2 because no two numbers can sum to like 20. Like no two one-digit numbers. So this has to be like, you have to carry a 1 here. So in order to carry a 1, you need the condition that a plus 3 is uh, greater than or equal to 10. Yeah, so then this tells you that a is greater than or equal to 7. So you have 7, 8, 9. But let's say like this is like 9 and 9 or something, then you end up carrying a 1 here. So the true inequality is 1 plus a plus 3, which is equal to a plus 4, is greater than or equal to 10, which means a is greater than or equal to 6. So you have 6, 7, 8, 9. So I think 9, so there's just 4 values, I think. Okay. Uh, next question. This figure shows two transparent foot-long rulers. The numerical marking on each ruler are in inches. The marking on the top ruler is 6 inches. Yeah, this question is like, I think the wording is kind of weird. I have to read this again. Um, well, I guess you can say this is two and a half. So, so this is like basically this ruler is shifted two and a half to the, like, if I could line this up right here and I could have the exact same ruler, but like flipped, but now I just took this ruler and I shifted two and a half to the right. So where six is going to be on this ruler is going to be six minus two and a half, I guess, since I shifted it to the right. So this is going to be three and a half, I think. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Um, Noah wants to fill in the two blanks in the numeral five blank, one blank, two to create the five. Okay, the divisible by six. So divisible by six is divisible by two and divisible by three. It's already divisible by two since it ends in two. So um, 5 plus 1 plus 2 is um, 8. And so for the sum to be divisible by 3, the maximum I could have is 9 plus 9 plus 8, which is 26. But 26 isn't divisible by 3. So I have to go for 24 as a sum. So 24 as a sum means that 24 minus 8 equals 16. So these two, like if I call this x and y, x and y have to sum to 16. And for this number to be as big as possible, x has to be as big as possible, which means I need x equals 9, which gives me y equals 7. So I have five nine one seven two five nine one seven two. Okay, and uh, what is the nearest integer x if three to the x equals fifteen hundred? Well, three to the seven is two one eight nine. Three to the six is seven twenty nine. So fifteen hundred minus seven twenty nine seems to give me seven seventy one. I think. Yeah, something like that. And then 2189 minus 1500 is straight up to 689. So this is closer, so it's 7. Um, how many different lines pass through at least two of the nine points? Um, I guess this is complementary. So the total is 9 choose 2 because you just choose any two of this 9 and you draw a line through it. And the overcounting 
I think is when you have like one line, like the same line can be over counted because I, this line can be attained if I choose these two points or if I choose these two points or if I choose these two points, which means only one third of those configurations are actually like true, which means I'm over counting two in every three because there's like three choose two ways. Like if, I, if it's collinear, there's uh, three choose two ways and you know, I can choose that one line. And the thing is, there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. So there's eight of those lines I can overcount with three collinear points. But the thing is, like, I only have to subtract by two thirds because, like, if I just subtracted it like three times, then I'm just gonna not ever count the one case where this is actually true, like for this one line. So like, yeah. So if I have this and this, I can see that's true, and then this, this is false, and this, this is false. So uh, I have to subtract just times two thirds to get for account for overcounting. So then that's just um, 36 minus three times eight times two thirds, which is 36 minus 20, which is, uh, oh no, no, it's, uh, wait, 20, no, 16. So I get 20, there. brain fart. Okay, so now this next question. So what is the sum of the coefficients of the exponent of the polynomial? Well, the trick to this is to just plug in x equals one and then you get the answer. So two minus three is negative one, negative one cubed is just negative one. Okay, now let's go to this question. 10,000 marbles are released into the top pipe as shown in roll down the pipe system anytime. Okay, yada, 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 yada. So it's cross-sectional areas. So it's important to note that like you have to square it to get the proportion. So if I put 10K inside, then in here, like 10 over 20 squared is one over four. So the number of marbles that go into the 20 is gonna be four times as large as that. So this is gonna be 2K and this is gonna be 8K. You can just divide by five. And then over here, it's the same thing again on this half. Like it's gonna go four times as much here and like not four times as much here. So this is gonna be 6.4K and right here is gonna be 1.6K. Again, to do that, just divide by five. And then on this side, nine times as much goes here than here. So to find what goes into 10, I can just do 2K divided by like 10. So I get uh, 200 marbles. So then the answer that goes through the middle is just 1. 1. 1, 1, 1,600 plus 200, which is 1,800. Okay, now we're on the final five. So these tend to be like the harder problems, but they're also way more fun to solve. So a rectangular prism of size three, four, five is made from 60 unit cubes, um, including the full yada, yada, yada. How many total rectangular prisms can be found? Oh, so this is like um, a really, there's a really cool solution to this. So, uh, I'll just, I guess, draw out the configuration or something like, I'll just sketch it real quick. This is like, obviously not like beautiful. So I'll say this is three, this is four, and this is five. Well, the thing to note is if I can break this up into individual unit cubes, like I'll just, like if I drew it like this, I can say this is one, 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 one. So this entire length is five and I can do the same thing here. And then one, two, three. The, what this allows me to do is for me to have a rectangular prism, I needed I, I needed some configuration so that it has two endpoints on this height, two endpoints on this height, and two endpoints on this like uh, this height, this width, and this length, or length width, whatever you want to call it, this length, this width, this height. I need two points so that I can make a rectangular prism. And the question is like how many of these can I make? So for the side length of five, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, like um, uh, vertices I can choose from. So six choose two, because I just need to choose two from the six. And same thing here for the four, I have one, two, three, four, five, uh, five choose two. And then for three is going to be four choose two. Like, so if you think the, the pattern is literally just N plus one choose two. And if I multiply all this out, it gives me all the possibilities. So 15 times 10 times six is 900. Okay. Now to the next question. Miss Pauling's chemistry class has five lab benches, each of which seats two students. Six students fall into the classroom. At least one of the lab benches is completely empty. Well, you can do this with very simple complementary because the complement of the case that at least one of the lab benches is empty is that no lab benches are empty. But since there's only six students, the only way that happens is if all the benches are filled and one kid goes into like one of the other benches. Because the way this problem is designed is that I have something like this, one, Think of these as different like lab tables and these are two benches in each one. Like if I have six students, the only way that I can have like every bench filled is with one and every one, but then one of these will have like two kids. So complementary wise, well, the denominator for this problem is 
I have, like, it doesn't matter who sits where, I guess, because there's just 10 seats, and I want to put six kids, so the denominator is 10 choose six. And for the complement case, um, that at least one of the lab benches is completely empty, like, let, if all of them are filled, the, the only way that happens is if one has two by pigeonhole, and the rest of the benches only has one kid. So the way I choose which bench has two kids, I can just do it as five choose one. Like, there's, I can just choose one bench out of the five. And then the thing is, let's say it's this bench, so this bench is completely filled. If I have four kids to put in here, like, it doesn't matter who I put where, so I don't need to do, like, four choose, like, one times three choose one times two choose one, like, whatever, like that. But what does matter is like, which of the two seats they sit in, because if I sit here versus if I sit here, it's different. So they have two seats in each of their four benches, so it's times two to the four. So five times uh, 16 is 80. So you have 80 over 210, but you have to do one minus since it's a complement. So like that, that's, I guess, an easy place to silly. So 1 minus 80 over 210 is 130 over 210, which if you divide by 10 is 13 over 21. Okay. Um, should I do the geo? Number 10, num number 30 looks like a geo kind of too. And 28 is geo. I don't really like geo, so I don't want to do geo. So I'll probably do number 29 first. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess, like, if... Like, your goal in this test isn't to get it perfect, but to get, like, nearly perfect. I guess the best strategy is to just pick out questions which suit your, like, strengths and flavor. So when 9 factorials expresses an integer in base 9, the result ends in m zeros, and the last non-zero digit immediately preceding m zeros is n. What is the value? Okay. So I guess the first step is going to be to prime factorize this. And then, yeah, if I remember correctly, uh, square root of 50, 40 which is 7 factorial is 12 root 35. So if I just prime factorize that way, so for 7 factorial, I have uh, 2 to the 4th times 3 squared times 5 times 7, I think. Uh, yeah. And then for 9 factorial, I just need to multiply by 8, and then I need to multiply by um, 9. So then this just becomes 2 to the 7 times 3 to the 4 times 5 times 7, because 9 is 3 squared and 8 is 2 to the 3rd. Um... Well, I want to rewrite this so that this 3 to the 4th is as 9 to the something since it's base 9. So I get 9 squared times 2 to the 7 times uh, 5 times 7. The reason this 9 squared is really handy is because what this tells me is that m equals 2. Like, I already know that m equals 2 now. Because the way, like, base works, if you, like, think about it, is if I have, like, this, and I call this, like, 9 to the 0, 9 to the 1, 9 to the 2, I already know that this number, like, 9 factorial, like, it starts from, like, 9 squared and goes on to the left, which means, like, 9 to the 1 and 9 to the 0 are both going to be 0. So I can just say m is 2 right off the bat. And then, um... And then to find, like, this value, I guess, like, to find the n, it's just... It's just 2 to the 7 times 5 times 7 mod 9. Is all this problem just boils down to at that point, I think? Let me just confirm. Yeah, I guess, because you can just, like, it's equivalent to just dividing by 9 squared. And then, so, if you just get rid of these two, the problem is just left with this. Like, if I just get rid of this two, the problem is left with this half, or, like, this side, this, like, region. And then this would just become the mod 9 case. So uh, 2 to the 7 times 5 times 7 mod 9. Well, I'm going to just, I'll distribute the 2 to, the, I'll make 2 to the 4 times 5. 2 to the 4 times 5 is 80. So I have 80 times, uh, then 2 to the 3 times 7 is 56. So I want to find this mod 9. Well, that's the same thing as taking the mod 9 of each individual number and then multiplying it, obviously. So 80 mod 9 is negative 1 because 81 is 0. And then 56 is 2. So this is negative 2 mod 9, which is also equivalent to 7 mod 9. <coughs> So this is getting, so n is seven. Okay, um, now I'll, I guess I'll do number 28 first. It looks like it needs paper. So let me, I'll get my paper up, but first I'll read the question. So in the kite, in the figure a kite with two right angles is circumscribed by a circle. The circle is then circumscribed by a square. So, okay. Um, so the area of the entire square is 6, so I guess that's handy. Um, okay, 
So what do I see from this is if each region has area two, that means the entire square is area six. So the side length of the square is root six. Um, I'm gonna divide this into two and just consider this part, like this half or something because they're both equal halves. So what I have then is my triangle is like, uh, this is root six, which I know because it's the side length of the square. So this is root six, um, this is X and I'll call this Y, I guess. So I know that the area of this entire triangle is two, which means each half has area one, which means in this case, I have X, Y over two equals one, which means X, Y equals two. And then I also know by Pythagorean theorem that I have x squared plus y squared equals root six squared, which is six. So I can, in this case, sub y equals two over x. And right here, if I sub this y into here, I have x squared plus four over x squared equals six. So I'm gonna make a new substitution here saying x squared equals z. And I think if I solve for z, I'm done, right? Yeah, because they ask for x squared. So if I solve for z, then I'm done. So now I have z plus four over z equals six. And then multiplying both sides by z and then moving the six z to the left, you're gonna have z squared minus six z plus four equals zero, I think. Yeah. So the quadratic formula is z equals six plus or minus square root of 36 minus 16 all over two, which is six plus or minus root 20 over two. And root 20 is two over two root five. So this is going to be three plus or minus root five, but obviously like they even tell you it's a plus root B. So it's gonna be the, so you're gonna have three plus root five since Z is, which is equal to X squared, obviously, because Z equals X. So this is eight. Um, let's look at the last question. So triangle ABC has vertices A, B, C. So uh, like in that, so and there's gonna be a rotation problem. So I'm just gonna plot this first. So what did it say? A was zero five, zero five. C is at zero, zero. Okay, that's cool. And B is at 12, zero. So I have this very beautiful, and I already know it's a right triangle since it's the sides are five and 12 and it's uh, perpendicular with each other. The image when triangle ABC is rotated clockwise about the origin. Uh, rotation, okay. So that means C is fixed. So you rotate it so that A is three comma four. And what fraction? Okay, I'll just draw that out first. So, hmm. three, four. Actually, I need to first see if three, four is above this line or if it's below this line. So this line has the equation negative five over 12 X plus five. Yeah. So negative five over 12 times three is negative 15 over 12. Negative 15 over 12 plus five. Oh, that's obviously going to be less than four because uh, negative 15 over 12 is um, like magnitude wise, it's the absolute value is bigger than one. So I'll just say three, four is like over here or something. Like that's a prime, which is three over three comma four. So then when I draw the right triangle, it's going to look, I guess, something like this. And I don't know what B is. I, this is probably longer than I drew for BC, but ideally this BC should also be 12. And this AC should also be 13. So I'll call this B prime. And we don't know its coordinates. And I want to know um, what fraction of the area of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is below the x-axis. Okay, well, A prime, B prime, C prime has the same area as ABC. So A prime, B prime, C prime is going to have an area of, uh, all right, is going to have an area of 30. I'm trying to think of a nice way to solve this. Like, honestly, I might just end up using complex rotation because um, why not? And because I'm confident that that'll give me an answer. So all I have to do then is I have to, f if I do my solution outline, like I'm just gonna like pseudo code it kind of, like complex rotation, I'm gonna rotate A prime onto A about C because complex plane is easy to go counterclockwise. 
and I'm going to find the rotation kind of matrix. And then based on that, I'm going to see what B prime would have had to be to get from B prime onto B. And then based on that, if I have the coordinates of B prime, I can get A prime, B prime, I can get the equation of the line. And if I do that, I can find the X intercept. So if I have the X intercept, I know the value right here of like C to like say D or something. And then I know this height because I know the coordinates of B. So the area is just one half times this times that and then divided by 30 to get the final ratio. So I know it sounds like a lot, but I guess if you practice a lot of bashing, this shouldn't take too long. So let's start. Okay, so to get from 3, 4 to 0, 5, I have 3 plus 4i plus a plus bi, because I don't know the rotation, equals uh, just 5i because the 0 goes away. So when I expand this, the real term is going to be 3a. And then plus 4bi squared is minus 4b equals 0. So 3a equals 4b. And then for the complex part, I have 3bi, so 3b plus uh, 4ai, 4a equals 5i, so it's just 5. So I want to solve this, because it's easy to solve. So I'll just multiply it like this right here by 3, I guess. And then I'll multiply this by 4. So I have 12a plus 6, 12b plus 16a equals 20. And this is um, 9a equals 12b. So 9a equals 12b. So for 12b, I'm going to put the 9a. So I have 25a equals 20. So a equals 4 over 5, which means, um, so this is 3 fourths times 4 fifths is 3. So b equals 3 over 5. Yeah. So I want to find what it takes. So this is the, so the rotation matrix thingy, whatever you want to call it, is 4 fifths plus 3 fifths i. So that's what, that's what I have to multiply the b coordinates by to get to... Uh, B. So basically what I then have is, let's call the coordinates of this like C comma D for a second. That means C plus D I e uh, times 4 fifths plus 3 fifths I equals just 12, because it's 12 plus 0 I, which means to get the coordinates of C plus D I, I just divided by this thingy. So I have the coordinates are going to be 12 over 4 fifths plus 3 fifths I. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, 4 fifths minus 3 fifths I. 4 fifths minus 3 fifths i. So on the top, you have 48 over 5 minus 36 over 5i. Then on the bottom, you have 26, uh, sorry, 16 over 25 plus 9 over 25, but the bottom is just 1. So the coordinates of b, like b prime, is just 48, 5 and uh, negative 36, 5. If you check the lens, it's probably, like the math probably checks out, to be honest. Now I want to find the equation of a, b prime, or a prime, b prime. So just remember the coordinates. I'll write the coordinates again. It's 3, 4, and 48, 5, and negative 36 over 5. So just so you remember the coordinates, I'll put a line. Um, now it's just math time, so yay. So uh, to find the slope... So I'll just say y equals, to find the slope, so 4 minus negative 36 over 5 is 56 over 5. So you have 56 over 5. And then 3 minus 48 over 5 is negative 33 over 5. So this is negative 56 over 33. So I don't think you can simplify that. Yeah. And I want to find the intercept here. Well, to find the intercept, I can just plug in x equals 3. So if I plug in x equals 3, I have negative 168 over 33 plus some b, which is going to be the intercept, equals like 4. But to get 4, 4 is equal to, um, in this case, uh, it's equal to 132 over 33, right? And if I want to get from negative 168 to 32, 132, then I need to have a positive net change of 300. So b is going to be equal to uh, 300 over 33, but that's just equal to 100 over 11. So in this case, I have the equation of the line a prime b prime. And then if I want to get the uh, the y-intercept, the x-intercept is in y equals 0. So then if y equals 0, then I have 56 over 33x equals 100 over 11. So x equals 100 over 11 times 33 over 56. Well, this just becomes 3, divide by 4, because this is 25, this is 14, so this is 75 over 14. So this point right here is uh, 
75 over 14 comma 0, which is pretty handy, I guess. So I guess now we can solve the problem. Because then now if I just, I'll just do my math side by side. So for the area of everything below here, it's going to be 1 half times 75 over 14 times the height is 36 over 5. So 36 over 5. And the total area in the end is 30. So divide by 30. 5 and 15, uh, 5 and 75 make 15, 2 and 36 make 18, 18 and 14 make um, 9 and 7. So then I have 15 times 9 over 30 times 7. Well, um, I guess it's nice that 15, <laughs> this cancels into 2. So I have 9 over 14. So I think the answer to this number 30 is 9 over 14. And uh, yeah, that's the test. Do I want to double? I don't. I don't really know if I want to double check any of them because they didn't like nothing seemed like it was silliable. So yeah, I'm gonna just end it there and then I'll grade this right now and then I'll put the score in the title or in the comment section. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe. If you want to see a details, more detailed solution in any of the problems, I think number thirty was kind of detailed. But if you want to see a more detailed solution to any of the problems, just let, let us know in the comments and let us know what you want to see next. And hopefully you guys are, you know, I know there's no school and stuff, but yeah, just keep grinding for next year. So, yeah.